In this video, I'll show you a way to provide your learners an easy to create review slide at the end of your project. Okay, let's get started here. So this, uh, this video was uh, the inspiration of one of my colleagues, Stefan from Quebec. Stefan wanted to be able to have a return to review button on all of his lessons in, in a particular Adobe Captivate project that would return to sort of like a backwards table of contents, if you will. So I'm going to show you how I would do that. And, uh, and you, uh, hopefully this will be of some benefit to you. So I have a real simple uh, Adobe Captivate project here. It's five slides. I've got a title page here, creating a review slide, a very simple next button, no, uh, no, nothing fancy there. And um, I've got three different lessons. All are essentially the same, lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. And on each of these slides is a return to review and a next button. And the next button, of course, is simply uh, the action for that is go to next slide. The return to review is jump to slide five. And some, jump to slide five or slide five simply has jump to slide two three and four, depending on which lesson your users want to click and, and review. And this would all work pretty much as it is, but what Stefan did not want is he didn't want the return to review button to be visible until the users arrived on this final page. So there's a couple things we can do here. So right off the bat, let's take a look at this return to review button. Now, here's my advice. You want to give it a name that's easy to find later. So I've called all of these buttons RTR01, RTR02, and lastly, RTR03. So later when I'm developing my advanced action, I'm not looking for button 27. I'm looking for something very easy to find. You'll notice, too, that all of these buttons have been made hidden by default. I've put the, uh, the not visible option with the visible icon from the properties panel for each one of these buttons. So the default view is that you won't see the return to review button whatsoever. And uh, the other thing you can actually do is, well, let's name the next button as well. So we'll just uh, add that to this particular project, next 01. And that's if in the event that you want to hide the next button uh, at a later time as well. You probably don't have to, but I'll show you that as well. So next 02, and we'll keep those visible for the time being. And next 03. So all you really have to do is create an advanced action that will appear on the slide that becomes your review slide. So this is what we're going to do on this slide here. So once the user has seen the title page, looked at lesson one, looked at lesson two, and looked at lesson three, they'll arrive at this review page. And if they feel that they're, you know, they want to brush up on their knowledge, let's say before a quiz or before moving on to another chapter, um, you can actually give them the opportunity to jump back and then return to the review slide without having to hit next a whole bunch of times to get through all the other lessons. So what I'm going to do is on load of this page, we're going to execute advanced actions. Now, I don't have an advanced action created yet, so I'll simply click on the advanced action icon from the page level properties panel, and we'll give it a name. We'll call it uh, review slide. I use an underscore where I would normally use a space since you can't have a space in an action name. And we're just simply going to, first of all, show all of those buttons. Now, remember, I gave them unique names so that it should be easy to find. Show RTR2 and show RTR3. And of course, you can call these whatever you wish. Now, optionally, you can actually hide the next button, which might be of benefit if you don't want people to be uh, 
um, hindered by having to go through all of those additional uh, slides. So we'll just do that, hide, and find the next button. I'm just typing part of the name of these buttons in to uh, find the, uh, there's, there's quite a few here, of course, and if you just start typing in the name of that button that you know to be the name of the button you wish to hide, then it should come up quite easily. So that's it, really simple. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, why don't I simply have uh, buttons that are um, visible for the rest of the project rather than having copies of all these buttons on every single slide? Well, there's a number of reasons why you might, might want to do that. If, for example, there's a completely different set of buttons that are going to appear on pages after this review slide, you don't want to necessarily have them visible on all slides after that. And of course, um, you know, putting it on your master slide introduces some additional problems that you could run into as well. This is really simple. It's a little bit uh, redundant in that you have to create the three different shows and three different hides or however many slides you're going to have this on, but it works well. So we're going to save this as an action and we'll click on close and we'll just do a preview of this and see how it works here. So we'll preview the, the entire project. So here we are, we've got our creating a review slide title page. We'll click next. We're on lesson one. We learn something, notice there is no additional buttons other than the next. We'll learn about lesson two now. And then next will bring us to lesson three. So now we've learned everything, we'll be brought to the review slide and we can have the opportunity to jump back to lesson one, two or three. Let's say for example, I wasn't feeling that great about what I learned in lesson two and I would like to review it one more time. So let's click lesson two. And notice now that my next button is gone, but I have a return to review slide button right in the middle here. So I can click that and it will jump me back here. And of course, I can visit all of these lessons individually as often as I wish. And of course, once I'm ready to proceed with the rest of my course, I can simply click the next button. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.